Game Ranks presents 10 things from the Five Nights at Freddy's series that fans hate. This is a list of gripes that fans of the series have, so if you're not into Five Nights at Freddy's, get out. Anyway, let's get started off with number 10. The first problem that Freddy fans have is actually with some members of the community itself. More specifically, the people who think that Freddy Fazbear's Pizza is a real place. Whether they're younger members of the community or not, that's just silly, so stop it. Of course, it is a little fun to imagine that a haunted imaginary animatronic pizza place is real, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's a bit of a waste of time. It's not real, it never was, and it probably never will be unless an enterprising fan comes around. That would actually be a really good idea to open up a real place. People will go nuts. But seriously, it's not real. Any YouTubers or forum posters posting phone numbers and job listings, it's all fake. At number 9, Five Nights at Freddy fans don't like Balloon Boy. Because goddamn, those eyes stop staring at me! Seriously, when we poked around on forums and Twitter and Facebook and stuff, a lot of people just listed that they didn't like Balloon Boy because he gave him the creeps more than anybody. And the way he just shows up and appears in the randomest places like under the desk or in the vents, it's just uncomfortable. And he just looks... uncomfortable. Ugh. At number 8, a big problem that Freddy fans have are the fans that are harsh on kids. Yeah, of course, at number 10 I was talking about, you know, smacking some sense into people and thinking about reality, but ultimately there are people on forums and in Freddy fan stuff that just really look down upon the younger people that play the game and are really mean, and that's not cool. Everybody loves Freddy's, there's a vast audience, but a large majority of it is younger people. And the last thing anybody should be doing is scaring them away just because they're younger and they like to have a lot of fun with it and maybe go a little overboard. That's fine, let them have fun. Don't you remember going overboard on a game that you loved a lot? Of course, maybe back when you were younger like me, you didn't have forums to troll on all day, but still, it's gonna be just fine. Just let the younger fans enjoy their game. At number seven, it seems like a lot of Freddy fans had a few gripes with Five Nights at Freddy's 3. Freddy's 3 has been called out for a lack of substance. Now, that's not to say it's a bad game necessarily, but it's just a little bit disappointing compared to the others, especially in comparison to Five Nights at Freddy's 2. No unlockable plushies, not a lot of replayability, and not a lot of undiscovered lore, or any other secrets or easter eggs to uncover. And there's less nights. It just feels like an overall shorter experience. That being said, it is a very exciting, action-packed ride, so even though it's a little shorter, the fact that it's condensed into goodness is not so bad. At number 6, we have the over-eager fans that are begging creator Scott Cawthon for Five Nights at Freddy's 4. Thankfully, at the time of this video, Five Nights at Freddy's 4 has been announced, but we believe this will probably never stop. You gotta let the guy enjoy himself, take his time, and make whatever game he wants. And if he wants to end the series, let him end the series. This might sound a little unfortunate, but he doesn't really owe anybody anything. He just made some really cool games that people happen to like, and it exploded. So try to go easy on the guy. There's a lot of hate threads out there that are pretty unnecessary. At number 5, we have awkward social media accounts pretending to be characters. Yes, we've all seen comments on a YouTube video by Foxy or Chica, and it's just kind of weird. Some fans don't really like it. Especially if you're just pretending to be the character and not even really using it exclusively just for cool comedy purposes. It's a little weird, and there's a ton of these fan-made accounts. Like I said, for comedy purposes, we all get one we're trying to have a little fun, but when it's just being used to pretend to be the character, eh, I don't know about that. There's a lot of awkward Five Nights at Freddy's stuff. Oh, and by the way, stop making Little Pony into Five Nights at Freddy's characters. At number four, a lot of fans have problems with those fan-made games. More specifically, the ones that are barely even games and are pretty much just made for a quick buck and to take advantage of fans. That being said, some of them out there, it's really cool that it's getting younger people into game development who maybe never would have tried to ever make a game in their life if they weren't inspired by this game. But then there are those other games that just steal assets from the Freddy games and renames them and repackages them just to rip off the Freddy series. And then afterwards, if they're called out for being a ripoff, they just claim that it's a fan game afterwards. And that just sucks. Can we get less of that, please? Please? At number three, some fans have a little bit of a problem with a plot hole and some timeline inconsistencies with the murders. A lot of fans, when we asked them, were quick to point out the date of the murder. A poster in the first game says a different date than the second game. Of course, there's a bunch of YouTube fan theories out there and everybody likes to pick these things apart, but ultimately this seems to be like a little bit of a glaring issue. But I do think that the reason why this is called out is because otherwise all the other Five Nights at Freddy's lore is absolutely solid. Yeah, it's very ambiguous and stuff, but all the information and clues and everything are locked down. So the fact that there's one inconsistency is really bigger than it really should be because it's compared to a series lore that is otherwise watertight and solid. I'm sure you guys have your own theories and information and we'll see it in the comments below and we're looking forward to that. At number two, a lot of fans have nightmares over 1020 mode. Yes, this intense difficulty mode is absolutely nuts and it scares players away. Seriously, did anybody here try and beat Five Nights at Freddy's 2 on 1020 mode? Because it was an absolute joke and almost impossible. I never beat it because I got killed by Bonnie a million times. And then I went and looked on forums and I saw some people attempt Five Nights at Freddy's 2 on 1020 mode over 200 attempts. That's just crazy. And I don't have that kind of time, but some of you guys do. But it's just so damn difficult and I can see why some fans have a problem with it. 
And at number one, we have that awkwardness that ensues whenever you go to a child's birthday party place, or most specifically, Chuck E. Cheese. I feel bad for people either way in this situation, but it's really bad for the person that works at this place. Especially if they meet an overly talkative Five Nights at Freddy's fan. Hey, so is this place haunted? Hey, so do your animatronic puppets ever, like, come to life at night and bite people? Hey, do you have a night security guard shift? Are they hiring? That's cool. So it's not haunted? Hey, play Ghost Hunters on your own time, punk. It's your child's fifth birthday. That being said, we have seen Five Nights at Freddy's themed birthday parties at Chuck E. Cheese, and that's actually pretty sweet. So guys, those were the things that bother Five Nights at Freddy fans the most. These are the things that they hate. Of course, some of you fans out there probably have a lot of other gripes, so let us know in the comments below. And if you had a good time with this video, maybe learned a thing or two about the Freddy's fan base, click the like button, because it does help us out. And subscribing is even better, because we talk about a bunch more games every single day. But thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.